Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Jeff is on assignment. Well, the U.S. and Holy See's relation is in the news. Uh, ongoing troubles in Iran and Turkey is making military moves into Syria after the U.S. pulled out. But first, we're going to talk about uh, something that we have brought your attention to before regarding U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo calling on all nations in his visit to Rome to join the Trump administration to protect religious freedom. He also pointed at China, Cuba, and Iran, uh, stating that about 11 Christians die a day for their faith, and uh, those countries are actually key countries for repressing religious freedom, and that one in nine Christians experience high levels of persecution. That's up from 14% from last year. He also called on the Holy See and the representatives of all nations at the meeting to join the U.S. calling for the freedom to worship God. Well, this meeting comes after President Trump's push to protect religious freedom. Well, this conference in Rome with the U.S. and Holy See marked 35 years since they established diplomatic ties. The U.S. Embassy to the Holy See was founded in 1984 with a mutual vision between President Ronald Reagan and Pope John Paul II. Uh, U.S. Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom, Sam Brownback, said in an interview with EWTN News, he said, the conference will focus on religious freedom, human trafficking, and development aid he also talked about how local faith-based groups can help push the topic of religious freedom in their areas and to legislators to help make them aware of this topic. He also stated how they have churches and parishes in various places to help rebuild churches in places like Iraq. He closed by saying the Vatican, the Holy See, and the U.S. government have great capacities to push for more religious freedom everywhere. Now, he hopes to see more growth and cooperation between the three, and he believes this goal will be achieved. Well, uh, Larry has some information on us regarding the things that we've seen taking place uh, with Iran and some things with its oil tankers being held captives, uh, you know, sanctions that have been placed on Iran, and also some other things with Russia getting involved with some oil deals. Uh, if certain things don't change with uh, kind of the sanctions and the economic oppression placed on some of these countries by the U.S. Larry, what do you have for us? Persia is back in the headlines this week after one of its oil tankers was struck off the coast of Saudi Arabia. At present, no one has come forward to announce responsibility for the attack, but the incident is being viewed with enhanced alarm since the event comes on the heels of another recent event where two major oil facilities in Saudi Arabia were also struck. The ripple effect of those blasts have emanated all the way to the U.S.'s pumps, where gas prices have risen yet again by another 2%. Another consequence of the assault, which might be easily overlooked, are the tons of oil that were spilled into the Red Sea. The famous inlet was the site of the attack and was already suffering from severe pollution. In consideration of that fact, Iran's foreign ministry says those behind the operation have that on their account as well. The U.S., however, asserts that it was Tehran which struck the facilities in Saudi Arabia, as well as having been behind several other related incidents. Iran denies the allegations, but with that as a pretext, America has newly dispatched hundreds of U.S. troops to Riyadh's aid, reportedly to deter Iranian aggression. 
Tesla's ambition to deter the potential tyranny of unscrupulous energy pioneers must now seem not so crazy after all, following the disturbing emergence of what's being called an energy famine. The development is at one of its worst states in Britain, where last winter 16,000 people reportedly died as a result of not being able to afford heat. There is no shortage of heat in the Euphrates, where any of several fires are still raging, including the old feud between the Kurds and Turks. Turkey recently set out, in fact, to launch an offensive in Syria aimed at its Kurdish competition and seemed to have U.S. backing, according to certain statements released by Washington prior to its actions. When the offensive began, however, the current administration reportedly altered its stance, breeding yet even more hostility and distrust into its relationship with Ankara, which was already strained, to say the least. Analysts suspect that as a result of Turkey's move, the Kurds will now be compelled to strengthen ties with President Assad or forge a new relationship with Russia. The relationship between Iran and China seems to be shifting, although China had initially disregarded American demands to buy and sell according to its dictates. A recent breakdown in a major oil agreement between them and Tehran is causing raised eyebrows. Iran's oil minister announced that the China National Petroleum Corporation is reneging on a $5 billion development deal which China had agreed to pay in U.S. currency. French Total is reported to have kowtowed to American pressure and backed out of a deal with Iran due to U.S. sanctions as well. All of this is a part of the environment that Tehran has had to face following the implementation of international sanctions and America's withdrawal from the nuclear treaty, which has produced an 80 percent drop in Iranian oil exports, despite its expressed determination to pursue all available avenues to maintain its viability. With all of that in play, Iran is now warning that it will further reduce its obligations under the nuclear treaty itself if its supposed European allies cannot or do not fulfill their promise to protect the Iranian economy. For IPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Baton, back to you. Hmm. Well, definitely looks like uh, these countries are going to do whatever they need to do to secure the financial and economic stability of their country, even if it means a threat being put on them from the United States. Well, in a major policy, policy shift, the U.S. President Donald Trump ordered all American troops out of northeastern Syria, arguing that it was time to get out of what he called these ridiculous endless wars, adding that countries in the region should figure the situation out. Republican lawmakers on Capitol Hill, who often lend their support to the president, ended up rebuking him for his, quote, reckless decision on Syria. Now everyone is wondering if it will follow through despite the political backlash. Trump also issued a warning to Turkey, threatening to destroy its economy if it does anything in Syria that he might consider off limits. Meanwhile, the United Nations continues to push its agenda to draft uh, of a new resolution or constitution for the country. The UN considers the recently announced Syrian Constitutional Committee a political breakthrough for Syria. The committee will hold its first meeting later this month in Geneva. Well, as a result of the war in Syria, 13 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance. 5.3 million of them are children. 6.6 million are internally displaced and 5.64 million are registered refugees. More than 400,000 people have lost their lives and the damages across the country are estimated to cost $388 billion. Well, some feared when the U.S. pulled out of Syria that Turkey would start bombing their neighbor, and that's exactly what has taken place. But they haven't just launched a bombing campaign. No, they now say they have captured a key city in a border town. Numerous disturbing videos are emerging on the Internet of Kurdish fighters being taken as prisoners and being publicly executed. Uh, there are also fears that ISIS could make a comeback as 700 people, including 250 ISIS brides, have escaped from a Syrian refugee camp. But the focus is still on Turkey's military and the militias it backs as they enter their fifth day of attacks on Kurdish militants and civilians as they push further into Syria. 
Well, with hospitals overflowing with burned and broken bodies and more gruesome videos showing up like the roadside assassination of a leading female Kurdish politician who was completely unarmed, the local groups or the groups carrying out this sectarian violence are raising fears that what is actually taking place is an ethnic cleansing in northern Syria. Now, the Kurdish-led Syrian Defense Forces are begging for the American allies to close northern Syrian airspace to Turkish warplanes. President Trump just released $50 million in aid to, quote, protect persecuted ethnic and religious minorities. However, the SDF reportedly told ABC News their commander has expressed to the United States if they won't stop Turkey from attacking, the SDF will have to ask Russia for help. Well, in an interview with Russia today, President Vladimir Putin says whether or not there is a new arms race developing in the world. Russia has nothing to worry about because their technology is already unmatched. Putin also says the U.S. uses NATO as a way of distributing their weapons where they please, many uncomfortably close to their borders. Now, some fear uh, we are on the verge of a second Cold War. Why don't you take a listen to what the Russian president had to say about that. Do you think that a new arms race could plunge us back into another Cold War? I wish it does not happen. In any case, Russia will be the least affected party because, as I said, we already have the next generation of weapons and these are unprecedented, with unmatched capabilities. In that sense, we've done our homework. We do not need to rush now and can calmly think of what could be done next. Military spending also plays a role here. It may or may not come as a surprise to you, but Russia ranks seventh in terms of defense spending. Saudi Arabia is third. The US military spending totals 716 billion, if I'm not mistaken. And next year, they ask for 750 billion. Next comes China with around 177 billion, followed by Saudi Arabia with 59 billion, right? Training behind are the UK, France, Japan with 48.1 billion, based on the data I have. And Russia is only seventh with 48 billion. However, we have unmatched military capabilities. What has made it possible? It comes as a result of focused research on priority areas, and the credit here goes to our specialists, their ability to identify those areas, mobilize resources. It has been made possible thanks to research institutions, production know-how, fundamental knowledge and competences. Therefore, an arms race is a bad thing, and it will not be good for the whole world. However, we will not be dragged into exorbitant budget spending games. Despite this, NATO continues to press forward. Do you feel that the alliance's march towards Russia's borders is a threat? How will you respond to it? We do feel it, certainly. We've always felt it and voiced our concerns. We were told, don't be afraid, you're not the target, and there is nothing to fear. NATO is changing, it is no longer a military bloc, it does not have belligerent intentions, and stuff like that. In the meantime, the North Atlantic Treaty remains in place, in particular Article 5, if I'm not wrong, that guarantees military support to other members, etc. It is a military bloc, and its infrastructure is moving close to our borders. We're not happy about it. There is another trick. I think it's clear to everyone that NATO is just a U.S. foreign policy tool. There is another trick. I think it's clear to everyone that NATO is just a U.S. foreign policy tool. Europe is aware of it. Take the French president. I do not need to make anything up. Another trick is that once countries join NATO, they have no say over the arms that are installed on their territory. This was the case in Romania with missile defense. Poland will soon get it too. It will be really close to our border. It is certainly a threat to us. We see it as an attempt to neutralize our strategic nuclear capabilities. However, it is clear their efforts are doomed to failure. I believe experts now see this as well. Now that we have the cutting edge systems that I mentioned earlier, these moves are no longer a threat to us. I do not want to say what we really think about it. Still, there's nothing positive about it. So yes, we do see this as destructive activities that escalate tension. There is nothing good about it. There is nothing good about it. There is nothing good about it. Well, the Russian president is one of many world leaders who see that this world is definitely heading down a spiral of death, ending in nuclear war, which will affect every individual on the face of the planet. Definitely something needs to be done right now, but again, like we've said before, 
world leaders are scratching their heads trying to figure out which path is the right path to peace. Well, Israel Hawkins and the House of Yahweh have been bringing that very information to the world for many years now, directing mankind towards the ways to peace. That's actually found in every holy scripture. Contact the House of Yahweh to find out more about the path to peace. And when you do, don't forget to request your free copy of the monthly newsletter and the Prophetic Word magazine. Here's how. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites by going to Yahweh.com, YeshualHawkins.com, or Yahweh'sBranch.com. You can also visit our website by going to YPNNews.com. You can email us at info at Yahweh.com. And for all calls outside the United States, please call the number on your screen. And again, don't forget the free online aids to assist you in studying and understanding your Holy Scriptures, the Israel Says and Ask Israel program. You can find those by going to YisraelSays.com and AskYisrael.com. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next is Yisrael Hawkins with vital information that you'll be pleased you sat and listened to. Follow us here at YPN News. I'm Katan Alexander. Thank you for watching.